AngularJS is an awesome little framework for creating rich client-side applications. Here I'll demonstrate some things it can do and how to integrate it into a Rails app. Let's get started. This is the app we'll be making. It's a simple raffling application where you can enter in a name and draw random winners. Uh, I've also used this app for demonstrating Backbone and Meteor in past episodes, so this way you can have a point of comparison in the frameworks. First I'll generate a new Rails app. I'll call it Raffler. And then I'll go into there and generate a new controller called uh, Raffle. And let's give it an index action. So this will be the, the root page that the user goes to because it's going to be a single page application. And while I'm here, I'll remove the public index uh, page. And then I'll quickly prepare this application in the routes file. Let's set this up as a root route. And so that will go to the raffle index action. And then in the CSS file, I'm just going to paste in all the styling we'll need for this application so we don't have to go back and adjust it. And then in the application layout file, I'm just going to wrap this uh, yield tag in a div with the ID of container just for some styling. So here's what we've got so far, just a single page application. I think it's time to add some AngularJS. Now there are several ways we could do this. One way is to download the AngularJS files from the site and toss them in the vendor assets JavaScripts directory. Or alternatively, you can use a gem, and that's what I'll be doing here. There's a gem called angularjs-rails, which I'll use, and uh, that goes under the assets group because it provides some assets which we can use in our application JS file. So we can reference these in a require line saying Angular here. Now AngularJS is compatible with jQuery, but it's not required. And I prefer to remove jQuery at least while learning Angular so that we're not tempted to fall back to that because there are often better ways to do things through Angular. To finish the setup process, we need to enable Angular in our application, and to do that, go into the application layout file, and in the HTML tag, add the ng-app attribute, so the JavaScript will pick this up and enable it for this page. That's it, now we're ready to use Angular in our index template. First, I'll do some uh, cleanup here, and at the top of this page, I want a form where the user can input a name to go into the raffle. So let's make a form tag, and I'll make an input field here of type text, and one of the coolest things about Angular is it's two-way binding. And to do that, you can bind a form field to some model data by calling ng-model and then passing it a name. So let's call this new entry.name. One way to think of this is new entry being the object that we're working with in this form and name being the attribute that we're setting on this object for this given field. Now, in order to see this binding in effect, I'm just going to output this. And you can do that with double curly braces. And let's output new entry.name. And after restarting my application, I can reload this page, and there's my field where I can enter in a name. And as I'm typing, notice it instantly shows up through the binding. So this is really cool. It, uh, AngularJS is detecting the changes in this field and instantly updating the view uh, for that change. Very cool. Now the next thing I want to do is add a list of existing entries down below, and then when I submit this form, that entry will be appended to that list. Now we can only get so far with simple bindings like this, so in order to add some custom behavior, we can add some JavaScript using a controller. So in order to make a controller, it's commonly done uh, using a div tag with the uh, ng controller attribute, and we'll provide a name, let's call it raffle ctrl, which is the conventional abbreviation for it. So I'm going to make that controller in the raffle CoffeeScript file, and this can be just a simple function. So let's make a raffle ctrl function, and uh, this, in order for this function to be accessible outside of this file, we can use the at symbol to uh, make it so AngularJS can see this, and we can pass in the scope into this function call. Now, scope is an object that allows us to interact with the view. We can get and set variables and functions on this. So let's uh, set a variable called entries and make this an array of entries for the raffle. Uh, I'll populate this with uh, three entries. Each one has a name attribute, so let's say Larry. Uh, curly and mo as the uh, initial seed entries. And then back in our view template, we want to display these entries in a list. So let's make this an unordered list. And for each of these list items, we want to repeat them for each element in the entries array. So to do that, there's an ng repeat attribute, and you can say something like entry in entries. So that will loop through the entries array and repeat this element for each one. So we can grab the entry.name like this and output it. Let's try this out, reloading this page, and there are the initial entries. So Angular automatically populated them based off of the entries scope variable we set. Next, let's make it so when we submit this form with a new name, that will add it to the list. 
So back in the form, uh, let me first add an input field here with the type submit. So we have a button that says add. And when this form gets submitted, we can hook into that behavior with this ng-submit attribute and tell it to trigger a function on the scope. Uh, let's call it add entry. And then back in our JavaScript, we can make that scope add entry function. And this is going to just append that new entry to the array. And this is incredibly easy to do. Just take scope.entries.push and then pass in the uh, scope.new entry, which is the object that the form creates when we type in the values. And then we want to clear that form, which we can do by setting the scope new entry uh, to an empty object. And let's try this out, reloading this page and typing in a name and submitting the form and instantly it gets added to the list. This is really awesome. Uh, Angular's bindings are quite powerful. They allow us to just uh, change the data on the JavaScript side and it instantly gets updated in the view. Next, I want to add a draw winner button below here and select a random entry and mark it as a winner. So in the view, let's add a button tag and call it draw winner. And to listen to the click event, we can just add an ng click attribute and have it trigger a function. Let's call it draw winner. And back in the JavaScript, let's make that uh, draw winner function. And for this, we want to select a random winner. So uh, let's grab an entry from a random element on scope.entries, which I'm just going to paste in the code for that to do the math of selecting a random item. And then let's just mark entry.winner as true so we can keep track of that. So now in the view, I need to display if an entry is a winner. And for that, I want a span tag with the class of winner to show up and say winner inside of it but I only want this to be visible if the entry is a winner. So we can do that with the ng-show attribute and pass an entry.winner, and if that returns true, then it's going to uh, show this span tag. Let's give this a try. If we uh, click draw winner now, it's going to just select a random entry and mark it as a winner. Incredibly easy. Now it's possible to do this multiple times, and I would like it so that uh, the latest winner shows up in red and bold. To do this, we'll need to keep track of the last winner. So let's add a last winner variable on here and pass in the latest winner. And then we want to add a class to the span tag uh, called highlight. So it might look like this if it's the last winner. And to do that, there's an ng attribute called class. And we can pass in a single curly braces here to do an expression. So uh, we can say highlight and that's going to be the class name we want to set, but only if entry equals uh, last winner. Let's see if that works. Now when I click draw winner, it's going to highlight the last winner, and when another one is a winner, that is going to be the latest winner, so that one gets highlighted now. Now the next thing I want to do is fix up this draw winner button because it's currently selecting any of these random entries, even if they've already won in the past, and selecting them as a winner. But I don't really want that because I would like it only to choose uh, from the non-winners to uh, consider them for winning. So in the draw winner function, let's make a pool array of entries that we can gather up. And Angular has this for each method that we can use to uh, loop through the scope entries. And for each of those entries, let's push it to the pool, but only if the entry is not a winner. So let's do that. And if our pool.length is greater than zero, then let's loop through the uh, pool, pool entries and select a random entry from there. There we go. And now we'll only select from the non-winning entries and consider them for winning. Well, I think I'm pretty much done with the client-side behavior of this application, uh, but in anything that I do here is just going to be reset when I reload the page because it doesn't persist. Instead, let's communicate with our Rails application and persist it through that. First, I'll generate a new resource in my Rails app. Let's call it entry and give it a name and a winner a Boolean attribute. And then migrate the database to add that table. Now I want to provide some initial data to work with, so I'm just going to uh, paste uh, some entry creations into the seeds.rb file and then run rakeDBC to uh, run that file. Next, we need to make a JSON API for this data so that we can communicate with AngularJS. And I'm going to do that in the generated entries controller. I'll paste in the code for this because it's pretty simple. I'm just using respond to JSON and respond with in each of the uh, actions. And you'll probably want to uh, be more extensive in how you set up this JSON API, but I'm just doing something simple here. 
Now in order to communicate with this, we can use something called Angular Resource, and that's provided as a separate JavaScript file, which we'll need to include in our application JS. It's already provided in the gem, so we just need to add Angular Resource here. However, in order to use this in our Angular application, we'll need to restructure this a bit. We need to define the resource as a dependency, and to do that we'll need to make a module. So we call angular.module, and then let's call this Raffler. And then we can uh, define ng-resource as a dependency for this module, which allows us to take advantage of that new file that we included. And let's store this in a variable called app. Now since we've given our application a module name, we'll need to set this as the ng app name in our layout file. So we'll just pass that in so it's going to uh, use that module for our application. Now that we have our Angular resource dependency set up, we can pass the resource service as an argument into our controller. And what this is is a function that we can call to return an object that allows us to communicate over a REST API. So let's store this as entry. And the first argument passed into here is the URL to the API. So let's do entry slash colon ID. So the colon is going to be a variable parameter. And the second argument specifies the default parameters. Uh, so let's set the ID to the at ID, which is going to be the current object's ID. So if uh, we're passing in an entry object into here, which has an ID assigned, then it's going to use that in the URL. Otherwise, it's going to skip the ID and just use entries as the URL. And then the third argument here allows you to specify some additional uh, actions that you want allowed to call on the API. The defaults uh, already handle most of what we need, but it doesn't handle the update action. So let's add that and set the method to put. Now if you want to learn more about how resource works, I encourage you to check out the documentation. Here you can see the different arguments we supplied, the uh, param defaults and the actions, and also you can see the default actions down below here. You have a git request, you have save which submits a post request, so that's like the create action in Rails, and you have query that is a git request with an array, so that's like the index uh, action, and then you have remove and delete which are like destroy actions in Rails. Now we can trigger each of those actions as functions on the object. So we can call entry.query here to, uh, this will end up triggering the index action on our Rails application and uh, use the JSON API to return an array of entries and that'll automatically be populated in the view when the results come in. Let's try this out and here we go. There's our uh, seed data we supplied in our database in our Rails application and that was fetched through Angular using the JSON API. And then when we create a new entry, we can trigger the entry.save function, which will submit a post request and trigger the Rails create action and pass in our scope.new entry into this. And the entry object that is returned from this, we can pass it into the array. And then when we mark an entry as a winner, we need to update it. So we can do this either by calling entry.update and passing our entry record into there. Or an alternative approach is to call entry.$update because this is already a resource object which allows us to trigger actions on it like this. Well, let's see if this works. I'll reload this page and now when I add a name or draw a few random winners and reload the page, then that all persists because it was stored in the Rails database. Now you'll likely want to refactor resources out into services and a service is an argument that you can pass into here. These are both services and so what I want to do is pass entry in as a service into here instead of creating the resource right here. And to do that, we can call app.factory to generate a new resource, and let's call it entry, and then supply uh, our resource uh, dependency in there, and then our function is just going to do the same thing that we did in the controller. Now it's important to understand what's going on here. Angular does dependency injection, which means it's going to take a look at the arguments that this function accepts and give it those services depending on the name of the argument. So in this case, entry is going to go, oh, I need the entry service, so it will trigger this factory function and give it whatever this uh, returns. This means we can even switch these two arguments and our application would still work because it supplies these arguments based on the name we give it. This seems pretty convenient, but it presents a big problem when we move our application into production. And that's because Rails will automatically minify the JavaScript and convert the argument names into something smaller, which means that the dependency injection will no longer work. Now there are a couple of ways around this. One option is to move our function into an array and specify the uh, 
dependencies as strings in the array. So in this case, we could do dollar sign scope and uh, entry as items in the array before the function. So that way it instructs AngularJS what dependencies this has. So if the names do change, it won't matter. And also we have to do this for every function that accepts services. So this one up here for making the factory, this accepts the resource, so we'll need to specify the dollar sign resource as an argument here as well. Another solution is to go into your production environment config file and configure how the uh, compression is done. So we can say the JS compressor and set it to uh, the uglifier with mangle as false, so it won't uh, change the names. Now, of course, this means the minification won't be as effective. And either way you go with, it's a good idea to thoroughly test your Angular application in the production environment just to make sure you don't run into any problems when you do make it live. Well, I think our application is pretty much complete. AngularJS made it incredibly easy to uh, make a dynamic client-side app where we can add entries and select random winners, and it all syncs up with our Rails backend. Now I've only scratched the surface of AngularJS in this episode. It has routers and views and a whole lot more. I encourage you to check out the learning section on the site for further details. Another good resource is egghead.io. There are some free screencasts there covering Angular. There are also several other Ruby gems available to help integrate Angular into your Rails app. There's AngularJS Scaffold, and I'll mention some others in the show notes. Well, that's it for this episode on AngularJS. I've been really impressed with this little framework. It's a joy to work with, and it's amazing how much you can accomplish with such little code. Thanks for watching.